Well, another shocking death and more big reveals prove that this season no one is truly safe. Hey guys, it's Cameron for Scream Queens, Season 2, Episode 4, Halloween Blues. I know it has been a long time since I've been Scream Queens. I feel like the show has been gone for months, and it has been. It's only been about like four to five weeks, but it took so long for the show to come back. I remember it was supposed to come back like two weeks ago, but they had to push it back because of the World Series running as long as it did. And then it was supposed to come back last week, but we had the election last week. So it just took so long for the show to come back, and... I never got to review the fourth episode, which was a Halloween episode. I apologize for that, uh, but I was definitely really looking forward to this episode. You guys know I've really been enjoying the scene so far. I'm surprised by the amount of people who aren't liking this season as much, who are saying, oh, I missed last season. I actually am preferring this season. I think this season is, is much more focused on character. It's a lot more focused on just being ridiculous and silly, and I think they're doing that really, really well. This isn't a show that needs to take itself too seriously. And this is another really great episode. I will admit this was the weakest episode of the four, but that's saying something. When you have a season this good, this still was a really good episode. I really did enjoy it overall. Few things that I thought were a bit rushed, but overall, I really enjoy this one. I thought it was a lot of fun to watch overall, and definitely a hell of a lot better than last year's. I hated last year's Halloween episode, you guys know. Oh, and uh, this one definitely was a lot better. So let's just get right into because there isn't as much to talk about in this episode. It definitely was more of setting up type episode, setting up, you know, what's to come and things like that, which was fine. But, I mean, after such a huge death, it's kind of hard to do more. But definitely the ending made up for it. But let's just get into it. So we see right off the bat that Chanel is mourning the death of Chad. You know, she's wearing a Jackie Kennedy costume. She has taken to uh, pissing in, plotted, in uh, potted plants along with screaming and insisting that all attention should be focused on her, the brave fiancé. But she's not the only one upset, as we see. Denise is also bombed by her on-again, off-again uh, boy toys murder. She's also curious about what his uh, dick looks like now that rigor mortis is officially set in. She vows to dress up as his bride for Halloween and find the green meaning. If she dies trying, she'll meet him in the hereafter. And this episode really does focus a lot on Chad and Denise's rela um, relationship with the on, on Chad and Denise's relationship and Chanel and Chad's relationship, which I thought they did pretty well. It was a pretty good way of saying goodbye to the character. Like, they did a good job of not not just immediately getting rid of Chad. Like, Chad obviously is dead, but this was a big character. This was a fan favorite, and I think they did a pretty admirable job of saying goodbye to him. I thought it was honestly really well done, and... Munch is now no longer believing that the killer is trying to exact revenge against the hospital since Chad, as we know, wasn't patient. He was a doctor. So there's no reason why it's about the hospital. There's definitely more to it. And she's worried about the news of his death going public. She also has to deal with Hester, who, as we know, Denise just transferred to Cure. And Munch and, and Denise are questioning Hester as to why the power in the green meaning only killing patients has been broken. Now, Hester either doesn't know or she isn't telling, but I gotta say, after this episode, I really do not trust what Hester is saying 100%. For a few key scenes, mainly one towards the end, I definitely do want to get into, but she does remind the women that Halloween is coming, and massacres tend to happen in the hospital on that particular night, so this very well sets up the episode and what's going to happen, and I really did like that. So Hester tells Munch that since she knows the killer is someone in her ranks, Munch should throw a Halloween party, use the staff for bait to draw the killer out, and she can catch them herself, which in theory is a pretty decent plan, but at the same time, I just don't really trust Hester. I mean, just the way everything she says sounds like she's a killer, or it sounds like she's hiding something, I really don't trust Hester. You know there's definitely more to this, and I'm sure it's going to make sense once they reveal who the killer is, but we'll have to see. Um, but... When Chad's family heard about his impending nuptials to Chanel, they all board a plane planning to stop the wedding, but the plane crashed, and upon their deaths, every single one of Chad's family members died, which, as sad as that is, it's honestly kind of funny, just knowing how terrible Chad's family really was. I mean, we know that Chad hated his family. That's how bad they were, and uh, all the money went to Chad, though, so when he died, his will became the legal document that determines where all the rabble money goes, and Chad, being of sound mind, gave all of his money to Munn, and the Cure Institute, which obviously very much upsets Denise and Chanel. You know, they thought that they were possibly going to get the money or they were going to split the money or something. And Chad's lawyer reveals his client called and made the request the day he died. Chanel has this huge meltdown. Like, we have not seen her this pissed in a while. It's this huge meltdown of, of every proportion. She launched herself against Munch's death. She attacks Chad's attorney and straight up attacks him, like, almost, like, gives, like, chokes him and things like that. It was pretty bad the way it was done. Um... 
But I did like seeing Chanel hit rock bottom, and we really haven't seen that in the show. You know, Chanel's always been rich. Chanel's always had this, you know, this dad to rely on. She's always had money in her life, and this is the first time in the show where Chanel doesn't have anyone to rely on. She has to do everything herself, and she has no choice but to go back to the job, friends, and life that she hates. All the stress has landed her in, uh, we see Holt's care as she has developed some odd rashes and Holt chalks it up to something viral due, st viral due to stress. Chanel cannot believe that another Chanel wing has been ruined and that a crazy killer is once again targeting herself and, uh, her friends and basically... We do get this mon we get this montage of uh, Chanel giving everyone presents for Chanel Halloween, which uh, I thought was kind of lame in this episode. I just didn't really feel like it needed to be there, and I feel like we're past it. Chanel Halloween, I've never really found that joke that funny. I don't really. I get that it was supposed to be that everyone respected Chanel so much that she just give them anything. This one just seemed weird. I don't know her giving them all this weird stuff and bodies and things like that. Um. I just didn't really find it that funny, I have to say. I, I that, that part of the episode, I just didn't really find funny. I thought it went on way too long. And it seemed like they were trying to top last year's, and it just that particular scene did not work. I've never really found Chanel Halloween that funny. I found it funny the first time around. I just didn't really find it funny this time, honestly. I, I just didn't. And, uh... Either way, Holt's convinced that the only way to make Chanel feel better is to actually cast the Green Meanie and make sure they don't kill again. So we ask Chanel if she has any idea who the killer could be. Chanel responds that in her experience, it's usually more than one with a brilliant ringleader pulling the strings, someone Ivy League smart. And uh, Chanel lets Holt know that she's just vulnerable enough for the conversation, intimidating that he's the killer to be a turn on. And uh, Holt re replies that the girls usually go for a bad boy. They give, Then he gives her a vial of uh, collodial silver to clear up her rash, promising her she'll be back to her old self and there's a lot of sexual tension going on between these two it's kind of weird to watch but at the same time it goes so well with everything else going on the season because like i said the season is so wacky and ridiculous that it, anything they can do it just feels right and uh, i think it's kind of funny what's going on between holt and chanel so i don't really have a ton to say about it but again i like seeing these smaller moments between them and now that chad's out of the picture there's more room for them and i think it's a completely different dynamic and it's completely different energy than what we've seen with chad and chanel and that's something that i'm definitely looking forward to seeing so the following morning, Chanel again has probably one of the worst things that could happen to her. She wakes up and discovers her skin has turned blue. Like, it's completely blue, whatever Holt did to her. Uh, she's turned blue. She looks like a Smurf, and she's now like, uh, she looks like Smurfette, basically. And uh, number five and number three try to get their leader to see the upside. No need for a Halloween costume, but they fail to console her, we see... Uh, and, uh, number three suggests that she go as a super bummed out mood ring, we see, which I thought was pretty funny to see. But the night before the party, Denise is decorating when the lights in the hospital go out. She creeps around with a flashlight with no particular destination in mind. And in an ex examination room, Denise encounters a green meanie who tries to behead her with a machete, but misses, lodging it into the wall. And, uh, Denise tells the killer that she beat the Red Devil, and that was before her FBI train. She's certainly not scared of a green booger, and she knows who's behind the mask. And the two scuffle, the green meanie becomes far less menacing while he's being uh, pummeled by apples we see and uh, Denise pulls her gun, empties the chamber, but the green meanie manages to escape, and I like that Denise actually is somewhat smart, like she's actually going after the green meanie, and actually seems like she wants to take the green meanie down, and that she's not scared of the green meanie, I actually like that about Denise here, that she actually isn't scared of the green meanie, I think it kind of adds something here, and after run, Denise then strikes a deal with Hester that she'll be released for 24 hours so she can attend the Halloween party, but at the stroke of midnight, Hester has to reveal the killer's identity. If she doesn't do that, then she's going to go back into solitary. That's just how it's going to be. So Hester will be outfitted with an ankle monitor and has to wear a Jason costume, and she's also not allowed to tell anyone about the arrangement. Later, lastly, she hands Hester an axe, finishing the touch for her costume, and you know that when she's going to hand Hester an axe and she's going to agree to a plan, it's not going to go well, though. I mean, the second this happens, like, someone is going to die. This is going to backfire horribly. I mean, just what we know that, she, that uh, Hester's been up to, and again, like I said, we can't really trust her as much this season, which I definitely don't trust her as much this season. Um, knowing what Hester has done, I really felt like this really could not go, you know, this really cannot go well at all, and it definitely doesn't, we see. We see that, uh, Chanel then confronts Denise. She accused the FBI agent of having Chad murder because Denise couldn't stand the idea that he was going to marry her, which honestly is a pretty plausible theory. We know how much Denise cared about Chad. We know the relationship that they had, and, uh... 
you know, if Denise did, it kind of makes sense, but the fact that Denise is running around Chanel's wedding gown is just further proof of Denise's obsession. She feels that there's, she has to be the one that did it. I mean, it just kind of makes sense that she, in theory, murdered him because the fact that she didn't want, you know, she had to marry anyone that wasn't her, and she was obsessed with that, and we know that she definitely did care for Chad. I don't know if Denise could actually do that, but I think that overall was very interesting, and Denise reveals that Chanel, that Chad was never going to marry Chanel. I just a few weeks during their American Beauty role-playing session, this scene was hilarious where they're in American Beauty and they're saying the exact same lines to American Beauty. That's the kind of stuff that Screen Queen's doing so well this season. The fact that they have these really obvious parodies, but they're doing it really subtly. That's something that last season just didn't have, and I think that's something that I'm really loving about this season that we just didn't really have last year. All the subtle humor that's here. Chad asked her to run away with him because he no longer loved her. Chanel points out that Chad only said that because it was the plot of the movie and throws one of her trademark tantrums, demanding that Denise admit that she murdered Chad, and Denise thinks that Munch is the killer. Munch inherited Chad's money. She probably had help from Zayday, aka Shayday. You know, she still doesn't trust Zayday at all. So Chanel decides that there's only one way to get to the bottom of not only which of them uh, on, you know, on the, of the bottom of, you know, which of them it could be. So Chad, you know, who Chad loved more, but also who killed him by pulling out her Ouija board. So we know that's gonna go well. So Chanel also learns from Holt that there is no cure for her condition and suspect that someone tampered with his solution, and Chanel demands that Munch had, uh, Holt arrested for assaulting her with silver and probably being in cahoots with Denise. She does not trust Holt at all, and murdering Chad and a whole bunch of other people with his serial killer hands, and Munch swears that Holt had an airtight alibi for the time that the chat was killed. He was banging Munch in her office just prior to the wedding, and which that was very weird to hear, but Chanel announced, well, not really, because we know how Munch does that a lot. She did that with Chad. I don't know if she just likes to bang Chanel's boyfriends, but I'm pretty convinced that she likes to. If anyone likes Chanel, she just likes to have sex with them. I just find it kind of weird that anyone that Chanel likes, she just bangs, and Chanel, but she also, I mean, there also was Wes, who Wes, we know how I felt about him. I'm glad that he's gone, because I could not give a shit about him, but Chanel announced that she's done with it all. She's leaving. She literally is planning on leaving. And Munch insists that Chanel can't leave until after the Halloween party because they need a lot to of bait to lure the killer in. She assures Chanel that once she develops personally, professionally, and physically, she'll have no trouble keeping a man. And what better place to do that growing than a cure? But Chanel tells Munch that she'll have to catch the kill without her help. I'm convinced that Munch genuinely does care about the Chanel. Like, she actually does want to help her. But at the same time, it also seems like she just wants her to be bait. I can't really tell. You know, Munch is someone who everything she says is just kind of you could take it another way you can't really take it with a grain of salt just because of the fact that yeah we do know what munch is going through well at least zayday and uh you know um uh, I can't think of his name right now, uh, you know, I'm sorry, Chamberlain, they, th there we go, Chamberlain, they think they know what she's going through, we don't really know if it is what she's going through, so, I thought that was interesting to see, but on her way out, Chanel encounters a woman wearing an Ivanka Trump costume, the woman chases Chanel through the halls, taking swipes her with an IV stand, and Chanel does suffer a blow of the leg before escaping, the woman removes the mask, and it's actually Hester we see, so this definitely confirms that, Either Hester is in cahoots with the Green Meanie, she's working with the Green Meanie, maybe she's going after the Green Meanie, I don't really know, but definitely something is going on with Hester that we don't know, she's definitely been working with the Green Meanie for a while, and... I would even go as far as to say that maybe the Green Meanie is someone who Hester, you know, when she was uh, the Red Devil that she worked with um, to take someone out and it wasn't successful and she's basically having the Green Meanie finish what she started. I could very much see that happening. I don't think that Hester's a killer. I think it'd be too obvious if they did that. There's definitely, it's definitely not Hester. They already confirmed that Hester's not the killer. So if they did that again, that'd just be weird. Uh, I think that Hester is in fact working with the killer, but I don't think she is the killer. But I think this very much shows that no matter what we think we really cannot trust Hester. I, I never really did trust her, but especially now, I definitely don't trust her. So when number three and Zadie learn that Chanel's been attacked by Ivanka Trump, all the attention shifts to number five, we see. And uh, Zadie number three had been helping her with that same costume earlier in the day. Number five insists that she was with them all day, so there's no way that she could be the killer. But number three and Zadie recall she did actually leave to make a phone call. So everyone heads to number five's closet. They discover that the costume is missing, and number five reminds them that she was attacked too. But since nobody saw it happen, it doesn't really help her case. So there's really not much they can say uh, to accuse her of doing it and Chanel declares that she and number five are no longer friends while number three warns her not to come to the Halloween party. Number three says they cannot disinvite her and she'll be there come hell or high water and we know that she just likes weird things and that's just who number three is just a messed up person so it makes sense but 
Chanel promises if number three shows up the party, they will kill her, that she's going to be the one to die. And I really thought that's what was going to happen, that they were going to kill off a Chanel. I've wanted to see it happen for a while. Not wanted to, but I just kind of thought that that's what they were going to do. So I am like, okay, they're probably going to kill Chanel in this episode. I thought that's where we're really headed. But the party's in full swing when Ivanka Trump arrives, but also in the mix is Ivana Trump. Number five thought that they were one and the same. After all, who names their kid after themselves and randomly changes one letter? So as everyone begins to question Ivanka's true identity, the hospital is flooded with patients and Ivanka seemingly disappears. We don't really know what that's all about. But I gotta say, the costume here were so on point. I, I loved all the costumes here. A munch was Hamilton, and there was a whole bit where they were talking about Hamilton and how great it was. Chanel obviously was a smurf because there really was nothing else she could have been. Uh, Zayda, I thought, was Cleopatra, if I'm not mistaken. I think she was Cleopatra. Um which no one seemed to recognize, they didn't know who she was, which I thought was pretty funny to see. Uh, I just thought all that stuff, they did that really well. It's very meta, and, and like I said, Scream Queens is really well with meta stuff, and I think that's something that the scene was just did really, really well. It was a lot of fun to watch them uh, poke fun at some really meta stuff, and I definitely really did enjoy it overall, and that was definitely something that was a lot of fun to see, is what all their costumes were, but all the patients were at the same party bobbing for apples, and now Hold believes that they have ear got poisoning, a fungus that grows and crops that can cause hallucinations, seizures, diarrhea, and vomiting when ingested, which the treatment's really risky, but it can cause severe side effects, and Zayda does, doesn't agree with Holt's assessment, and Munch gives her 10 minutes to come with a viable alternative because there really doesn't seem to be another solution, and in the midst of chaos, Denise and Chanel are stealing away to contact Chad. Chad makes an appearance, and I thought it was cool the way they got, um, uh, what's his name? Glenn Powell one more time just to do this, and he lets Chanel know that now he's in heaven and playing golf with Jesus, which that is totally something that Chad would say, him saying that he loves heaven and everything's great there, and uh, how he saw, um, you know, certain characters there, and Chanel questions how she's able to see him. Chad thinks he's pulling a ghost and communicating with her using Denise's body, so Chanel asks Chad who he loved more, and Chad actually says, Denise, Denise knows what she's doing the first time they did it. He had 10 back-to-back -back orgasms and eager to change the subject. Chanel asked Chad who killed him, but he managed to spit it to spit it out. Zayde bursts in before he manages to and breaks the spell. We were about to find out who the killer was, but of course Zayde had to ruin it for them. Just a really fun scene. I liked having to see Chad one more time. I am sad to see you say goodbye to the character, but again, I think it's so ballsy that the show killed him off. I'm not really upset that we're not going to see him as much. So number five is wandering the halls alone. When she comes across Ivanka slash Hester, number five is convinced that Chanel, even after Hester pulls out a butcher knife, I don't know why she thought this, but she's so busy arguing why Chanel shouldn't kill her that she doesn't notice that the green meaty sneaking behind her. She's now the creamy center we see in a serial killer Oreo, she says, and the green meaty stabs number five in the back. Zayde and, and uh, Cassidy discover that the party girls are tripping on a drug, not just not ear gots. Uh, they won't require treatment, and while the drug is potent, it's rarely fatal. They also learn the Green Me main appearance of the party. Chanel comments that the Green Me isn't much of a killer since he drugged people with something that really wasn't even lethal, so it doesn't really seem like the Green Meanie maybe doesn't want to kill them. The Green Meanie just needed a distraction because he needed to, because the Green Meanie wanted to kill someone else. We don't really know, but we don't really know what the Green Meanie's deal is yet. We, you know, we don't really understand it, and uh, Denise then, here, which this part really didn't make much sense to me. I mean, the Green Meanie is the killer. Why wouldn't the Green mean he want to kill them. I didn't really understand this very much. If you want to kill Chad, why didn't he want to kill them? What exactly was he trying to do? That just didn't really make much sense. But then we get to the ending, which the ending really did make up for it. We see Denise, she hears number five calling for help, discovers her in the hallway. Also still hanging out is the green meanie, and he throws punch on Denise, which uh, Denise feels is really a lousy way to kill her. And he electrocutes her with a defibrillator, and Denise goes in the best way possible. You know, she says that, oh, there's no way, you know, I don't need a heart condition, I don't have a heart condition, you don't need to do this to me, you're not going to get me that way. But he continues to electrocute her, and it leaves number five alive again. Denise is dead, and that is the way the episode ends. So we Again, very shocking stuff, but let's get into this episode overall. So there's not as much to say about this episode. Like I said, this was a very much a transition type of episode, and uh, I really did like this episode overall. Seeing Denise dead, yeah, was sad to see, definitely. Not nearly as big as Chad's death, but I was still surprised they killed Chad and Denise off in two episodes because Denise is such a fan-favorite character. Everyone's always loved Denise since the beginning. I've never really gotten the appeal. I liked her in the beginning. I didn't like her in the second half, as you guys know. But I did like what we got with her in Season 2. I thought they did some really funny stuff.
stuff with her here. I liked what we saw um, from her overall, and it was just a lot of fun to watch. Definitely, I enjoyed uh, what they did with her. Um, I enjoyed what they did with her this season. So it was sad to see Nisi Nash go, but I understand she was always a recurring character. She never was a main character, so she always had the ability to die. So again, it does show though that no one is safe and. I don't really know if this death is going to be as much of a loss, but it is definitely showing that there's more going on to Greeny than we think, which is definitely very interesting. The biggest question is exactly what is going on with the Greeny and Hester. There's definitely some sort of a connection there. We know that Hester did, in fact... Um, have that costume. We know that the Green Meanie was present there, so I'm thinking that either these two are working together or Hester is, like, plotting against the Green Meanie and working with them to make them think she's working with them. I really don't know what exactly is going on there, but I feel like if Hester wanted to do something, she would have done it by now. So the fact that Hester hasn't really killed anyone, that definitely makes me think that she might not necessarily be on the killer's side. She might just be on their side trying to get information. I don't really know, though, what she's trying to do, but definitely something weird is going on between Hester and the Green Meanie. I'm sure we're going to find out soon. We just don't really know what it is yet, which overall I think is very interesting. I can't wait to see really what's going on there because that's going to be very interesting. I still think the killer's Ingrid. I, we haven't seen her at all. We know that she obviously is killing, um, you know, just random people, and uh, I think it makes sense why she's killing Chad, while she's why she's killing Denise. You know, Ingrid has been hiding out this entire time. I still think that she's the killer. I think that there's a lot of evidence to prove that Ingrid's the killer that I'm not going to get into necessarily in this video because I already have, but there wasn't much said in this episode about the Green so I can't really get into uh, what exactly is going on there. But the fact that she's there, you know, we know that this is someone who has been the Cure Institute for a while now. Again, Ingrid's been there for a long time, we know. We know she's been there for a very long time. So again, I very much think that Ingrid is the killer. We just haven't seen her in a while, and I think that's very much the reason why. But we'll have to see. Um... Chanel is blue, as we know. I don't know if she's going to be blue forever, but I think that definitely is very interesting. The fact that she really does not trust Holt right now, uh, I get. I really do. I mean, the fact that he did this to her, you know, did he do this intentionally, or is he tampering with evidence? I don't think that he's the killer. I don't really think that Holt's the killer. I think it'd just be a little bit too obvious that they did that. Maybe he, his hand is going to kill. I do think that something bad is going to happen in, in, you know, regards to his hand. His hand is going to kill someone, but I don't think it's going to be part of the green meaning. I think it's going to be a completely different type of killing. Um, he's either going to kill Munch or he's going to kill one of the Chanel's. I think it's going to happen. Number five, is she going to get away? We'll have to see. I mean, we know she's alive right now, but is the Green Meanie going to let her get away? We'll have to see. I'm sure she is, but that's something going to be interesting to see. It was kind of funny to see, um, uh, did, you know, Chad one more time just say that he actually loved Denise, and that's actually who we cared about more. Again, typical Chad response was because of the sex. I thought that was kind of funny to see. And then I guess the only other thing to really talk about is what exactly uh, is going on with Munch. You know, I'm not really thinking that she's sick anymore. I think that she's just trying to say this and hiding something else. I don't really know. They haven't talked about it since, so I don't know if that's going to come up again, but we'll have to see. Either way, guys, we are almost halfway through the season. I think there's only 10 episodes of the season, I'm not mistaken. Uh, but that's in my review. Hope you're enjoying Lawrence, guys, saw this episode overall. I'm definitely looking forward to tonight's episode. I know it's been a long time, but I knew I had to get this review out. Sorry it took so long. Definitely won't happen again. I'm really enjoying the scene so far. Uh, what do you think of Denise's death? Do you think it was well earned? I think that it wasn't as shocking as Chaz, and I do think, like I said, this episode was a little bit, not filler is the word, but there definitely was as much going on as there has been in the past few episodes. Killing Denise is a loss, but it's not nearly as big as a deal as Chad, but it definitely, I think, some huge characters are about to get killed off. I think someone really big is going to die in tonight's episode, and from here on out, I think most of the major characters are probably going to get killed off. We'll have to see. Like I said, I think Brian Murphy's trying to make up for the fact that he didn't kill off many big characters last season. Now he's going to kill off most of the big characters this season. And I think the whole thing with there being four left, that's going to happen this season. I very much could see it happening. But that's my review. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you guys in my next video, which will be for a movie review, and we'll see you guys for that. Okay, bye.